Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video where I review your resumes and projects. Special thanks to Kinjal in this video. He is the one whose resume that we're going to review and his GitHub uh, portfolio of projects we're also going to take a look at. So, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more content similar to this, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications to be alerted when I post my next weekly video. Now, if you would like to have your project reviewed, let me know in the comment section below and shoot me an email at keng.ds at gmail.com, also linked in the comment section. All right, let's take a look at Kinjal's resume here. So the first thing I notice is that it's quite long. This is, you know, four or five pages. I can't speak for resumes outside of the US, but in the US, you almost never want to have a resume that is longer than a single page unless you're a ph you know someone with a phd or you've worked in industry for 15 plus years and you've got a ton of patents or something there's no reason for your resume to be that long you know like you know my resume i've done i'd like to think quite a bit in my career and my resume is still a single page you know as a data scientist you're trying to explain things concisely you're trying to be able to convey information very effectively and having a resume that is a single page is one step in showing that you can actually do that. You know, a big theme in what I talk about is showing rather than telling and, you know, showing that you've done a lot in a single page is, is a very powerful skill. I also see that there is a career objective, a professional synopsis, and also an about me. I think that, you know, for the, for the most part, again, in the US, uh, I, I wouldn't go about including those, you know, saying things like you're result oriented or you're hardworking or you're, you're competent and efficient. It, it, it doesn't mean a lot coming from you. You should be able to show these things in your work experience from the get go. So I would personally, you know, to make this into a single page, these are some of the things that you can remove. When you're applying to these jobs, they know what your objective is. It is to get the job that you're applying for. Uh, especially, you know, if you have a, a matching skill set or your resume or your experience shows that you would be a good fit for the position. <clears throat> Let's see here. Um, I always recommend starting with technical skills at the top. So, you know, these are really good technical skills, but I'd also go into more depth into some of the packages, for example, that this person knows in Python. So. Most jobs look for pandas, they look for scikit-learn, they look for numpy, they look for matplotlib. <clears throat> Same here with R. If you know R, you, you should probably know ggplot. You should probably know some of the other packages there. Um, I really like, you know, Tableau is very, very powerful. Um, you could go more into depth about the descriptive and inferential statistics, you know. You could also include some of the machine learning models, methodology that you're familiar with. I mean, these, you know, the, the uh, recruiter is going to go in and try and match up the skills that you have to the job position. So you should just make sure you include the ones that you have that are relevant. You know, that this can be an exhaustive list. You, know, you can have 30, 40 skills there, uh, assuming that you are familiar with all of these things. <clears throat> I also noticed uh, when I first looked at this that Kinjal ha actually has a lot of experience with Excel and pivot tables, and he doesn't include that at all in the technical skill section. <clears throat> From my experience, you know, you want to share all of the skills that you have that could be relevant because you never know when you're going to need those things for a job. You know, on my resume, on my resume, I, I actually include my experience with Photoshop or with Adobe Premiere Pro just because those are, are things that could come in handy at some point. So, you know, let's talk about how we'd go about structuring this resume on a single page. I put together just a quick outline of what that looks like. So you want to have your name, obviously, and technical skills up, up top. Next, you want to have your job experience, your project experience, education, then, and then about me. If you're a student, you can put the education after the technical skills. Um, but it, again, this, you know, Kinjal has good work experience. He should showcase that more. Uh, that is the, you know, after the technical skills, the second thing that a recruiter uh, or a manager is going to actually look at in this in this case. 
Um, you know, if you want to, you can put some information about yourself at the end. I recommend putting hobbies or something that would show um, a little bit more about you and how you would fit for the role. So for example, in my free time, uh, I enjoy doing puzzles. You know, that, that um, could imply to some employers that you're a problem solver or you seek out some challenges. I also recently tried to learn how to do a Rubik's Cube. That's kind of like a fun fact that um, might convey to these people that you're interested in trying new things and challenging yourself. So that is a good place kind of towards the end to talk about some of the personal details or, or give some personality to your resume. <clears throat> At the bottom here, uh, Kinjal includes some non-technical skills. Again, I, I talked about why I don't really like to see those in resumes. They're extremely subjective, and you should also be able to see those things through the work experience or the project experience uh, that this person has. You know, if I see a resume with, you know, 15, or, or GitHub with 15 different projects in it, I already assume that that person is, is a hard worker. Or if I see the code is very meticulously commented and everything on the resume is very formatted, I would, that suggests to me that that person is very detail oriented. So you can show those things in different ways and it's a lot better to show them um, in those circumstances rather than telling. Now, uh, the last thing on the resume I'd like to focus on is the descriptions of the work. I, I've linked above to episode two of this series where I go over another resume and I go through my formula of how to communicate um, your work experience very effectively. Basically, the formula is an action verb, a quantitative outcome, and then a description. So instead of collecting data for prospective clients, it could be, you know, collected, you know, 100 records for 50 different clients to help them improve their business processes by 8%, right? Those are quantitative outcomes describing your work. And that's what we do with data science. We use numbers to describe scenarios or to create value. And that is a great reflection of how to do that in general. So again, I think that this, you know, this resume, the experience that Kinjal has is, is perfectly fine. He probably just wants to condense it, condense it and think about it, uh, the resume in the same way a, recru a recruiter would. So you basically want to go through and say, okay, this is what the recruiter is going to look at first. I want to put it up top. This is what they're going to look at second. I'm going to put it right next. So if you take that approach, you're you know, drastically going to improve your hit rate with getting interviews, getting callbacks, etc. Now let's move on to the GitHub repo here. So as usual, I recommend a nice high quality professional picture. And this is a place where you can actually put a little about me statement. You know, again, I would avoid the, um, the, you know, talking about yourself that you're detail oriented or that you're high ener energy or whatever that might be. But you can talk a little bit about what they can expect to see in this, uh, in this, you know, in in your profile. So, looks like he has three projects. Again, I usually recommend as many projects as possible. But you know, three is a good start. It seems like these all have. Um, you know, a reasonable amount of information here. Uh, it, I'm not sure if this is a prompt, if these are from coursework, what that might be, but it is good to see a little bit of background. Uh, I would also recommend including some pictures, some outcomes. Uh, you can see where I talked about that in episode one and also episode three uh, of this series. I've linked them above and below as well. Now let's look at a Python notebook here. So the Jupyter Notebooks are really good because you know you can use the plain text and I highly recommend that you do that. Whenever you have a notebook that um, a potential employer is gonna look at, I recommend, again, same as the README, putting an overview at the top, putting a little bit about what they expect to see in this notebook, like what you're trying to analyze, and then potentially linking to the results. So you, they can click on it and they can see exactly what you find. Um, you know, all of these packages look totally fine. Um, you know, we go through and explore. I would, I would love to see a bit, you know, there are some comments here, which is fine. Um, but I'd love to see a little bit more about what these things mean. You know, for example, these box plots don't really tell me a whole lot. Um, I, I mean, part of that is the nature of the data, but you know, what, what, um, by doing this, what do we want to find out from this information? 
Um, I think the density graphs are fine. There's just a lot of them. And as someone coming in, not having explored the data, you want to give me a little bit more context about what's going on. Um, you know, it looks like he compares a couple different classifiers. I mean, this all looks totally fine. Um, but I don't see like a true, um, you know, a true kind of result summary. Um, I would love to see a little bit, a little bit, um, a little bit more on where your findings are very clearly stated. So I think that project is generally fine. Um, it looks like, well, let's look at this one, the customer transaction. Again, there's some decent commenting here, but I would really like to see a lot more. Oh, we already looked at that one, sorry. Um, do, do. I do like that um, he includes an R version of the code. Again, I'm not sure if that, that is prompted by a course or what it might be. But I think that that's, that's pretty cool to show that you can do the exact same analysis in Python and R. It looks like all of these are from, um, from Kaggle or pre-existing data sets. Something that uh, he could do to set himself apart is to actually collect some of his own data as well. Uh, in this analysis, um, again, it looks like he does a little bit better with commenting here. That's good to see. Um, you generally want to make sure that across all your notebooks you have the same level of comments or the same level of insights or they're in the same style. So if someone's going through and looking at these, um, they know what to expect and they know where to skip to. So this one I think is better than the first one. Uh, it's a lot more clear about the models that are being used and it looks like he also gives a little bit better um, examples of the results of these things. So that, that is what it's like. I like to see. It looks like this one's a little more recent. So that trend is, is good for this person. Um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of the same things in the last project. Uh, I really like to see core plots. I think you should probably do that in almost all of your analyses. That's a really good way to, to show the, the data that is, that is present there. So, you know, overall, uh, it looks like they're doing a clustering project. This is a cool visual. This is something that I would put in the readme of this project as well. So, um, you know, overall, I think this is a fine repo. You probably want to clean it up, add a couple more projects, and really, really work on the readmes here. You know, the readmes are going to be the first thing that people see, and you want them to be very clear and organized. You want people to know exactly what they're getting into. Um, and what you're analyzing from the onset. You know, recruiters are not going to have a lot of time to go through these. They're probably not going to spend more than five minutes looking through your stuff, probably even less than that, to be fair. So you want to make it as easy for them as possible to actually get that information. So I'll kind of leave it there. Thank you again for Kinjal for, for letting me review his stuff. I really hope that this helps him to you know, further his uh, data science aspirations here. Again, if you're interested in having your projects or resume reviewed, feel free to reach out in the comment section and also in the, uh, to my email, kenji.ds at gmail.com. Finally, you know, one thing that, that has come up is that, you know, interviewing in the US might be different than in other countries. I'd love some thoughts on that below as well. You know, are my assumptions or, or is my experience in the US relevant to other countries as well. So again, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.